everybody. Good to see you. Happy Sabbath. We're going to do some Bible reading today. How's that sound? We're not going to do interpretation of the Bible today. We're going to read the Bible and let the Bible speak for itself. How's that sound? Amen. Subtitle it in Christ, okay? And what I hope to do here today is to show Christ in the Sabbath, okay? I think that the Jews made a big mistake way back when, when they put the Sabbath ahead of the Lord Jesus Christ, all right? When they crucified our dear Lord and Savior. They're worried about keeping the Sabbath, man. They had to get that body off the, off the cross. I think they missed the whole boat. I think they did. It's very possible that many of us could too, if we're not careful. It's very easy to put the cart before the horse, you know. Um, in righteousness by faith, we realize that it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ, and that we have none of our own righteousness, right? Amen. So, how is it that as people grow in the Lord or, you know, maybe just experience church, they become self-righteous? How does that happen? How does that happen? And somebody believes that somehow they, maybe even keeping Sabbath is, is somehow righteous in themselves, you know? I mean, there's a lot of people out there probably keeping the wrong day for the right reason. Yeah. Okay. And I just fear in our flocks there may be people keeping the right day for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. Reading back here at Exodus 15, beginning in verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases. That's the way I like to say it. Diseases. That means a lot when you think about it that way. Upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Praise God for that. And they came to Iliam, where there were twelve wells of water and threescore and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. And they took their journey from Iliam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Iliam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots, and we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Do you think the Lord God that loved you so much would allow you to die of hunger? If you were these people that just came through, all that they came through, do you think so? Probably not, huh? You think it's possible that God puts us in certain predicaments and circumstances to test us? To see what it is that we're made of? To see where it is that our true loyalty lies? Well, yeah. hmm. What does the Bible say? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, right? All these sin, all these three, everything can be encamped in that, correct? Right? Mm -hmm. And the devil, did he not hit the Lord with this when he went into the desert? What was the first temptation? Appetite. Appetite. Turn this, turn this rock into bread. Do you think that wasn't a temptation for Christ? I mean, he had had nothing for 40 solid days. I mean, some of you, if you don't get a meal 
you know, three square a day, it's like, oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Right? You probably won't die. We have to get victory over appetite. We have to. We absolutely have to. Because the world is sick with appetite. Appetite for all the wrong things. Okay? I mean, our whole, our whole world is, if it feels good, do it, man. You know? You deserve it. Sign your name here. You can have it. You know? Spend what you don't have. Eat till you just can't stand it anymore. You can throw up and eat some more. You know? I mean, it's ridiculous. What was the second thing that happened to the Lord? What, what did he do? The devil said what? What was the second temptation in the wilderness? First was the stone. Jump down, jump down from the mountain. If, if thou be the Son of God, if thou be the Son of God, is he not taking and interpreting the Word of God instead of speaking the Word of God? You see what I'm saying? What did, the de what did Jesus do? He never entered into this dialogue with the devil, did he? What did the Lord say? It is written, it is written, it is written. Okay? <laughs> the devil's trying to do battle with the Word of God. Even though he took on humanity, he put on flesh. This is the thing that you just never are going to understand as long as you live in all of eternity. I don't think we'll ever comprehend that. Okay? I rack my brain just thinking about that. It blows my mind that Christ would take on humanity. He put on flesh, made like us. You see, he took upon himself our nature without the propensity to sin. He, he could have sinned, but he never had the propensity to do it. Do you see what I'm saying? This is amazing. This is totally amazing. So the devil's trying to trip him up, but he doesn't, he doesn't enter into a controversy. He says it is written. This is where we need to be. We don't need extra biblical interpretation to, to take our minds in the wrong direction. This is the devil. This is the way the devil does things. This is the way he did with Eve in the garden, isn't it? Didn't he say, well, did God say, you won't surely die? Hello? There's the first sermon ever preached on the immortality of the soul. We don't have immortality of the soul. If you read the Bible, it says Jesus only. Period. Amen. We will get immortality when Christ comes and He gives us new flesh, this new body. But not until. And what is the what's the third temptation that uh, that the devil put on Christ? This whole world. If thou be the Son of God, just. Just, you know, you don't have to go through the cross. You don't have to go through all that suffering and pain. I'll just hand it over to you, man. All you got to do is bow to me. What do you say then? <laughs> away with you. Away with you, yeah. Behind me, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Thank you, Deborah. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word, the mouth is. there something wrong with this thing? Working on it. Okay. But by every word that speaketh the mouth of God. All right. Verse 4. Then said Moses, then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain every day. And I may prove them whether they will walk in the way, walk. This drives me nuts. Is, it, is that all right? I don't hear anything wrong now. Yeah. Okay. Wrong. Shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in and it shall be as twice as much as they gather daily. So it looks to me like God's going to do a special miracle here, isn't it? He's asking them to take this manna, a 
That's what it was, right? Angels' food, the Bible says, that comes down from heaven that he's going to feed the people with. And what does Jesus say? He says he is who? The bread of life. Right? Hmm. Interesting. And Jesus came from heaven, right? To feed the people the bread of life. He is the bread of life. The bread of life is what? Is it not the word of God? But he's doing this special miracle that on the Sabbath day, this, this manna will carry over, and they don't have to go out and, and work for their food on the Sabbath to come back and bring it again, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a special miracle. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go bad. The worms and stink. The worms and stink. That's what the Bible says, right? And what about Jesus in the tomb? Crucified on Friday, right? Lays in the tomb through the Sabbath, correct? Sunday morning, does he stink? No. I don't think so. No corruption. God did another special miracle. Absolutely no corruption. Verse 6, And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel at even, Then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord. For he that heareth your murmurings against the Lord, and what are we that ye murmur against us? And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. For the Lord heareth your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. And Moses spake unto Aaron, saying unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the, in the cloud. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay around the host. And when the dew that lay, lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as hoar frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. <clears throat> Gather, it every, gather of it every man according to his eating, an omer for every. I lost my place. An omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over. And he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, Let no man leave it till the morning, notwithstanding the hearken, hearken not unto Moses. But some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating. And when the sun waxed hot, it melted. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses, and he said to them, that this is which the Lord has said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and see it that you will see, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until morning. And they laid it up until morning, as Moses bade, and it did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. Isn't this wonderful? Isn't this a beautiful blessing that the Lord has given us? You know, we're going to be going through the time of trouble not far away from me today, okay? And 
I'm pretty sure that our bread and water will be sure. But I'm not so sure that we're going to have bread and water every single day. So, you know, it would probably be a good thing to prepare yourself for something like this that's coming now. In other words, maybe try fasting once in a while. It is a good thing, and it's recommended in the Bible. And you won't die, I promise. You can handle it. You know, um, maybe even skip a meal or something once in a while. And spend that time, instead of eating, praying. And seriously pouring your heart out to God. And say, you know, look, I, I want to keep myself from this. And I want to have, I, I want to be serious about a relationship with you. I know the Bible says that this is something that we should do. And I think this will help me prepare. So for some people, you know, it's not a big deal. For other people, it is a bigger deal. For me personally, I mean, I could go without eating. It's not a big deal for me. But, you know, if I don't sleep, I can get kind of grumpy. Uh -huh. You know, other people, if they don't eat, yeah, they it's kind of grumpy. We all have things that we need to, to work on. And to look at. And these things should prepare us for the tough times coming. Yeah. You know? Because it's not always going to be this easy. And, and let us remember something. Um, I know this is a very simple thought, but things, brothers and sisters, don't get easier. Okay? Nothing gets easier. You get stronger. Okay? In Jesus Christ, you get stronger. Nothing gets easier. It just doesn't happen. Verse 25, And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is the Sabbath unto the Lord. Today ye shall not find it in the field. Six days ye shall gather it, but the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. The people of the seventh day, the people on the seventh day, for to gather, and they found none. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse you to keep my commandments and my laws? See for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. These people are stiff-necked people, aren't they? They don't listen very good, do they? Neither do we, do we? You know? There's something we should learn from history is that we don't really learn much from history. But the whole Bible is his story. This is the history that you need to know. This is the book that you need to study. This is the book that you need to understand. And you know, and we are doing quite a bit of reading today, and I, and I hate the fact that probably for some of you, this is the most reading of the Bible you've seen all week. I hope not, but anyways, I would like to jump over to chapter 20. Okay, so God has instituted the Sabbath, and now we're coming to Him actually giving the law, right? In chapter 20? Amen. And God said, of oh, chapter 20, verse 1, And God spake all the words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. This here is a very specific God, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This God can't be, you know, just a, a general God. He's very specific. Okay? The, the world today is looking for a general God. God that will absorb all religions. And there's many ways to God in this thought of this general God. But in this very specific God, in his story, in the Bible, from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation, is the story of whom? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay? Him and him alone, always and only. And the very, from the beginning to the end, the book of Revelation is the revelation of whom? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And John 14, 6 says, I am the way. The, what, is, what does the way mean? 
the way to God. Right? Yeah, there is no other way. The truth. What does it mean when Jesus says he is the truth? Every word that he speaks is utter truth. Jesus Christ is the very word of God, the express image of the invisible God. Whew, that was a light amen. The express image of the invisible God. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So then we go on to this, what the what the these people back then said, all that the Lord has said we will do. That was back in 198 here. Yeah, 198. All that the Lord has said we will do. So now the Lord is, is speaking here and he says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Are these things that God's trying to keep from people? You know, you shall not kill, you shall not steal. Imagine the world if we had no locks. Nobody ever stole anything from anybody. Hallelujah. We never had to have locks. How many people here have had stuff stolen from you? Okay. Did you feel kind of violated? Yeah, you feel kind of, you, it's not a real good feeling. God doesn't like people stealing things from him. Okay? You could, well, you preach a whole sermon on that. Oh, I'm not going to go there. But he seeks worshipers, right? He seeks people, his subjects. We're all his subjects. We're all saved, okay, by Christ. We, I mean, we're in Christ because of what he did. The whole world is, as far as I'm concerned. They can choose to throw it away, but it's not something that they even have to take. In my opinion, it is something that was given to them, okay, 2,000 years ago. And it was the promise before that. Amen. All men are saved the same way. But let's, let's understand something. You can't just be in Christ to be saved. You have to have Christ in you. Amen. The hope of glory. And here one more time, I'm going to give you my opinion. My opinion is, if you cherish, if you adore, if you keep this justification, okay, and it means more to you than anything in this world, you will carry that over the finish line. Sisters, and before you even realize it, it will become sanctification. Amen. People see this as two, just, I see it as one becoming the other. If you cherish your justification, you it will become sanctification. This isn't you doing it. This is the Lord doing it. You, know? you just hang out with the Lord and things happen. You know? If, if I wanted to be a good bowler, I would hang out with good bowlers, right? And guess what's going to happen? I'm going to become a good bowler. If, if I wanted to be a good Bible student, I'd hang out with Bible students, right? Amen. You want to learn. You learn from each other. You, you grow together. And these things just happen. You know, if I'm hanging out with Jesus... If I, if I wake up in the morning with Jesus and I go to bed with Jesus and I spend a day with Jesus, you know, pretty soon, I look totally different. You know, I don't do the things I used to do. I don't say the things I used to say. And is it something that I've done? No, no, not at all. Well, I can take no credit for anything. The only thing I'm real good at is sinning and screwing things up. I'm good at that. I can do that real good. That's the only thing I'm good at. Everything else, I need God's help. That's the only thing I can do good on my own is screw it up and sin. But with God, all things are made right. Amen. I didn't do anything, brother. That thing just did its own thing. Okay, 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it shalt thou shalt not do any work, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. It rested the seventh day. For the Lord blessed and hallowed. 
holiday. I want you to turn to Genesis 2 and verse 1. Okay? And I want to show you something beautiful about the Sabbath. Genesis 2, verse 1. I'm sure, sure you're all there. Amen. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Do you, do you hear that in there? God didn't just say... I'm blessing the Sabbath day. I'm sanctifying the Sabbath day. He rested through the Sabbath day, okay? And then he said, I blessed and I'm sanctifying this day. Do you hear me here? So what was Adam and Eve's first day? It was the Sabbath, right? They were created Friday, Friday evening. Here it is. What is God showing them? He spends the whole day, all of Sabbath, Showing them everything, his glory, his wonderful creation. He's telling them all that need be done is done. I did it. It's me. And every Sabbath hereafter, I am going to come and we're going to have this special sanctuary in time, okay, to be together for us to fellowship and worship me, the Lord, your God, who's done everything for you. You see, this is a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. And what makes the Sabbath so holy? His presence. His presence. And the fact that he said that this is his day and that he sanctified it. You see, it doesn't need anything else but the word of God that speaks for itself. You see, it's funny how evangelicals point to Adventists and say, well, you know, you guys are working your way to heaven because you keep the law. That sounds devilish to me. I mean, let's wait a second here and give, give uh, the due that needs to be given that because the, the Jews in their time, they did do that, didn't they? They put the law above the Lord. Okay? So what are people doing today? Keeping first day of the week. Well, yeah. I'm not even going there yet, but you're, you're, you're right on target, Ricky. But they put, they put Jesus here, and they throw the law away. This is one and the same. You can't, you can't keep the one and throw the other away. The law, if it could be changed in, in the slightest little bit, Amen. there would be no reason why Jesus had to die in the cross. Period. But let us understand that Jesus, that, that God said, this tree, this tree, is the only tree in the garden that you shall not eat from it. Okay? Because that is my tree. Okay? Do you think that tree looked any different than any other tree in the garden? Probably not. Probably not. But what made it different was God said. Right? Now God said, that the Sabbath day is today, not another day of our choosing. Okay? So, are we going to believe God? Or are we going to disbelieve God? Because every time we disbelieve God and we try to translate His words and, and, and try to, you know, twisting and turning of the Scripture and interpretation, we try to come up with some new thing. We end up screwing up, don't we? Why don't we just take the word as it is and what Jesus says and believe it? And believe it. Because if we can do that, we can finish this thing and go home. It's really that simple. It's really that simple. I want you to turn to Exodus 31. Yeah, 31. Mm. 15. We'll start.
start of 15. Six days may work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whosoever doth any work in the Sabbath, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. What does perpetual mean? It, it never ends, that's right. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel for what? Ever. Ever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and